Good morning, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. We're in 2024 now. I am shooting this on day two of 2024. I feel like there's some natural energy that comes along with a new year for me. Like I, I just love the fresh start concept. I use the fresh start concept sometimes throughout just a single day. So when a new year happens, I feel like, yeah, this is it. This is going to be great. So thank you for being here with me. In today's video, I wanted to address a video request that I had. I think I saw it come in before the Emily Awards, and it was basically just asking for a full face of makeup where every product is less than $10. And, you know, if we rewound all the way back to, like, high school me, and I came to find out that a lot of drugstore makeup was going to be over $10 a piece, I'd be like, what? But that's the world we're in. There's a lot of new stuff that comes out, and it's over 10 And I immediately thought, well, I'll just pick the best things that are under 10 And then I thought, no. In the Emily Awards, I feel like they're are a lot of things that are under $10 or many, many steps of the makeup routine that are named as favorites. And I thought this would just be kind of a repetitive thing, you know, just using those same products. I'm not saying every drugstore favorite named in the Emily Awards was under 10, but a lot of it was. And if you think about the hard candy favorites, the wet and wild favorites in particular, vast majority, if not all of that stuff in those brands is going to be under 10. And there's some much loved stuff, but I thought in this video, I'm going to pick some other things that are under 10 that I also really enjoy. This entire look, I road tested it yesterday and I thought it really wore well, looked good, but there are really some things I don't just go talking about left and right, and they may not have won an Emily Award, but there's still, as we know, tons of great things that weren't necessarily featured in those videos. So I'm glad you're here with me. As I look in my bag, I know a lot of this is available at Walmart, so I based it off of a lot of Walmart pricing, but then also there are some things from Ulta that I know were under 10 and Dollar General under 10. I need a sip of coffee to get this one going. Skincare is already done, and I'm going to start off with the Essence Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer. It's the one with the little uh, watermelon on the front, and I really have enjoyed this one. If you like a little hydrating primer that still has a very nice, um, easy slip across the skin, this is great. And from Essence, we're getting a little glass bottle, little pump. It smells really fresh and watermelony, and I'm about certain this is based on a product from Glow Recipe, but oh, I love the way it kind of has a, a stretch across the skin. You feel like it's somewhat hanging together, not immediately just sinking in. It's creating that effect of smoothness and added hydration. And that's a $5.99 product at Ulta. I decided I would bust back into my Maybelline Fit Me, and this is my dewy and smooth version. I also like the matte and poreless version, and I probably reach for that one a little more frequently, but not all that long ago I had repurchased this one. It's for normal to dry skin. That's probably the cat category I fall into, but I do get a little oily in the T-zone occasionally. Shade is natural beige. Slightly deep for me right now, but it's all totally gonna work out. The concealer that comes in, the powders that come in, it's all gonna like be perfect, okay? So we've got our classic little foundation here that's gonna be, I think it locks in at like $7 and change at Walmart. Once you shake it, all the products kind of like bubbled up there at the top, so you can just dot it on. Oops, need to shake it again now. And I have a little friend up there you may have seen. Decided to come with me into the new year. Just a little something extra on the face. Call him Buddy the Zip. He wore a little pimple patch last night and it flattened him out, but I can still see him. Okay, so we're just spreading this around, and this is a beautiful medium coverage foundation. So I feel like it's the kind of foundation that a lot of people would like. It's not too light it's not too heavy. It goes further than tinted moisturizers tend to go, but certainly not a full coverage, masky feeling foundation. Not that I feel like all full coverage foundations feel like a mask, but there's a lightness to this. And if you're super oily, go for the matte and poreless option. But I'm just dabbing this around, pressing it in. I just thought it responded well in the day to the concealers and powders that went on top. Everything looked really flawless at the end. We're just getting this all blended in. See how it looks a little dark at first, but it's just blending nicely. Just take extra care, get down the jawline, get around the ears. And some areas where you want more coverage, sometimes I just do this instinctively, but think about patting and pressing more than buffing. You know what I mean? We got larger planes of the skin where I'm like, okay, let's just move it around. But then we get up in here, press and pat. 
I think we're good with that. And then the concealer that I picked out that's under 10 that is amazing and sometimes gets left out of the conversation by me from time to time, it's the Instant Age Rewind from Maybelline. And this is the brightener shade, so it has that little bit of a pinky tone, but you can also choose from a whole array of skin tone options. And I'm gonna open that up click it up and I'm gonna dab some and it's pretty thin. It's going on nice and thin. Well, the thing about this tip, it does pace you, okay? And I think it paces you a heck of a lot more than a lot of those Buckfoot applicators that come with like a half teaspoon of concealer on them. It's going on thin. It might look like I've got a thick surface area applied, but it's a thin amount of product. And I'm gonna even use it to conceal the zip. Why not? So it's been dabbed all around and this was really the reason why I felt like the slightly deeper shade of foundation was made right with the lighter shade of concealer. And we're going to e.l.f. Duo Brush. This is the one I used for the foundation as well. And since the concealer already feels kind of like it's taking up a good amount of space on the face, I don't really even have to go to that smaller end. I can just tap over it with the larger end and look. It's so good. Can we say rediscovered love here? Yes! Oh, that's that New Year's Day, second day of the year <laughs> pick me up. Yeah, I've got a fast turnaround on this video. I believe I'm going to try to post it on the day I made it. And I could have gotten up and done this yesterday because I was up here doing my makeup, but I thought I kind of want to test these products together first and really feel that I know what I'm talking about <laughs> before I, I bring them all in. They're products that I all felt good about, but I wanted to see how they would work together on the skin through an entire day, and it was good. So now we're brightened up. There is a nice amount of coverage, I feel like, in that concealer. If you want to build it up a little bit, you can. But I just feel like that brightener shade does such a good job. And then what's the one that has the little bit of yellow tone in it that isn't just the skin tone? Is it neutralizer? Feel free to correct me in the comments section, but I think there's a shade that has has um, a little bit of like just general yellow tone, but it's sort of brightening too. And then I'm not grabbing for Maybelline Fit Me. I love Maybelline Fit Me, loose powder and fair, amazing stuff. But what is also amazing is Wet n Wild Photo Focus. So we're gonna use that one today. Again, all this stuff, under 10, pissed off my top. I've got a lot that's kind of sifted out. So we're just gonna gently tap into that with the triangle powder puff. I get some to where I can see it on the puff, but I don't have any excess that's like falling off the puff really. And I'm just going to begin dabbing this in my innermost corner. And if you're asking what is the difference between this and Maybelline Fit Me, I th honestly think they're very similar textures. If we're just talking surface of the skin, I think they look really similar to one another in terms of not making that area look too dry, too cakey, whatever. But I feel like the Maybelline Fit Me might just be a hint brighter than this. Perhaps that powder, rather than being just a light translucent powder, like it packs in just a smidgen more coverage when it's all said and done. But I'm, as you can see, tapping us on the T-zone as well. Can you see some little blotches of powder? That's okay, we're gonna dust it away. I like turtlenecks. I like turtlenecks that don't suffocate. Here, see this one? This random little turtleneck that, I think it's like Jones, New York. It came from TJ Maxx a long time ago. But I loved how it came up, but Look how I'm not being suffocated. Yeah, I don't like the ugh. The neck's where I'm ticklish. The neck is where I don't really want to be like, mm, get off of me sweaters, you know? That's kind of the way I feel about it. Then we take a little Morphe under eye bullet brush and just dust it away. Any small brush can do this job, okay? A Real Technique setting brush can do this. And then you might find, oh, my brush still has a little on it. We can gently use that to set around elsewhere because I didn't pull in another powder option. We're not bad off here. Even though we use dewy and smooth, everything's feeling pretty consistent all over the skin right now. And then for cream bronzer contour, we're gonna use this from Hard Candy. Um, yeah, I guess this did win an Emily Award, but we're gonna feature it in this video anyway. I think it still needs more love and more attention. The Face Off Luminous Gel Bronzer. This is in the shade Sweet Tea. It's just so dang easy to work with. You're gonna swipe. You're gonna swipe, you can pick up a little more and you can hit it here and hit it there. And this doe foot applicator is just the best. Absolute best, not a mess. It's still a squeezy tube like, you know, all the Charlotte Tilbury wannabes are, but so, so easy to work with. And then watch it blend across the skin and be that perfect natural shade. I love it. There is a deeper option in this line, but this one is my fave and achieving that softly contoured cheek there. 
So nice. And you notice how nothing set too fast. Look how everything is getting worked into the skin with ease and it sat there for a second. You know what brand I kind of miss in the drugstore that was always under 10? Well under 10. NYC, New York Color. That was a real fixture of my early makeup days. The roll-on lip glosses, little eyeshadow palettes, that if you knew what you were doing, you could really like make something of those. Sunny bronzer, the sheer red lipstick. I think I've named off every iconic thing. And then a line of blushes that at Walmart, yes, these come like just cents under the $10 mark, but I wanted to talk about it because I don't feel like I talk about them quite enough and they are very pigmented. I feel like there's a lot of bang for your buck here. I think you'd have this product for a long time. But Revlon's blushes are quite good and this is the one called Hot Cheeks. It's kind of neat. As soon as I open it up, I feel like it's something from NARS that I've seen. It's super rosy, but it has a like slightly golden shift, but it really has some nice depth to it. Little goes a long way quality, like I said. So I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. blush brush and we're just going to lay it in like that. Just lay it in so you can see a little on the brush. And then we're going to begin the blend. I feel like this is a nice wintertime option, guys. Really rosy and pretty. But bare minimum was on the brush there. And look at that pretty pinky perfection. A little bit, just roll the brush. There are a lot of good under 10 blushes I feel like I could point out from the drugstore. When new ones come out, they are creeping up there. I mean, look at L'Oreal's. They're definitely over 10. Those infallible matte, very pigmented blushes. But this is probably giving every bit of the color those give, but with an even more interesting finish, I think. That little bit of sheen. Okay, we're alive in 2024. Then consider Hard Candy for the highlighters. This is the one called Rose Gold, and it's got like three little strips of color. There's also one called, I think, Peach Please. Maybe can't quite tell, but there's a variation in color here. It's kind of golden, it's kind of light. So maybe got a hint of rose gold from the side. I just dab my brush willy-nilly into everything. Get a small cloud going, and then you know you've done enough. And then just kind of lightly touch the skin. Light circular motion. You know, I feel like I'm buffing it in a little bit. It's not super chunky, like, oh my gosh, you really have to work hard at this. But I just find myself starting here and then gently moving that circular motion upward and outward. And then the placement just ends up being so right. Again, a little bit on the brush, gentle circular motion, the pressure being applied here, not, not much at all. And then just let it circle up. I would dab a little bit up here. So the whole face gets included in the glowiness. Not like we just have some magical cheeks that are the only part of the skin that take on glow. And take a little bit right on the cupid's bow. And this would make a nice eyeshadow too. Just a light wash of something on the lids. Do you ever feel like even if it's a day when you don't feel like doing any sort of eyeshadow look to speak of, if you just put something of a powder texture on the lids, you're in better shape for the day because things don't start to feel oily and tacky there. You could just pop a highlighter and or a bronzer there. As we move on to eyebrows, I know I talk a lot about the various drugstore brands that have a great skinny brow pencil, like almost all of them do, but let's say you're in a situation where you only have access to a Dollar General. Well, LA Colors is there for you too with the Browy Wowie. Not as big of a shade range, but still they're offering some things. I think they have a thicker pencil as well, and this is their skinny one, and it's medium brown for me. It has the little spoolie on the one end and the skinny brow pencil on the other, and it really can definitely hang with the stuff that is going on from the Maybellines, Revlons, and L'Oreal's of the world. A gentle fill in here. This shade for me, maybe it's a tinge light, but it all works together. Like I've got enough of a brow present on my face that even if a shade isn't perfect, it sort of has enough of a forest to hide in, you know? But yet it can still add to the evening out. I don't know what's going on down there, but I'm hearing things falling down. I think the kittens are at play. See that? So good. And a really good texture in this pencil as well. Easy to use. And you can take that little spoolie and just say, hey, even out, even out. Booyah. I think I talked about in another video how we're playing a lot of board games lately. Well, we've gone from Monopoly Junior into full-on Monopoly with the girls, and it's fun. Really, board games are a very good quick math reinforcer, too, because when they're making change, when they're totaling things up, even just totaling up the numbers on the dice real quick, like, it's good for them, but it's just fun, and we get 
competitive about it. I ended up winning yesterday a game that started on New Year's Eve and it got to the point the girls ended up staying up until like 10 and they were pretty much ready to go to bed by that time but we were playing then so we had to pause our game. We picked it back up during Bubba's nap time yesterday, all of us, and let me just say boardwalk and park place with four houses each, that will take anyone down. I think my boardwalk took down Bub, took him out of the game, and then my park place took down Belle. And if you're thinking like you would never want to play Monopoly with your kids because the games do take too long, and if you got younger ones, like Biddy really enjoys Monopoly Junior, and the board actually has two versions. There's a really easy version and then you flip it over and there's a version that's like the perfect precursor to regular Monopoly, but it just goes a lot faster and it's still really, really fun. For a gel, I picked out another thing that's like right up there with my Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt. The brush is good in its own way. This has a small brush, but the creaminess inside of it works very similarly to the Brow Fast Sculpt. And this is the Teddy Brow from Hard Candy. And I think the shade I have is called Brunette in this. It just says Brow Gel on it. The brush is just like Benefit Gimme Brow and you can can see some little fibers kind of in there that I guess attach in with your brow hairs and kind of thicken things up a bit. Crock pot meal of the week for Bub that's going to be his meal prep that he takes each day is um, Mississippi pot roast. I will put the recipe for that down below. He loves that so much and he generally is eating pretty low carb so I give that to him with rice cauliflower at Aldi. You can get it like garlic and herb style or something. All you do is, it's just a steamer bag. You just put it in your microwave and then he kind of mixes that in with the meat and stuff. It's really good. And then I use one of my Michaela Thomas recipes and she's someone I discovered on Instagram and then I went and downloaded her cookbooks. It was like something I bought to have all her different recipes because I just, I love the idea of recipes made with the purpose of meal prep, like the exact amounts that should go in your little dishes and like the total calorie counts and stuff that goes along with it. So you really feel like you're not just eyeballing everything saying, hmm, this much of the food is my lunch. Like it kind of keeps you within the navigational beacons. I made the, something I made in the past and I forgot how much I loved it, her smash burger bowl recipe. Use like little potatoes that you cut up and air fry and then you put your ground beef on that, caramelized onions, make a little burger sauce, a little cheese goes on top of that and then that's ready to be reheated each day of the week. Can I stop talking for a second and show you Milani eyeshadow primer? Old reliable, okay? I know I talk about it a lot. I use it daily. You know how it is guys, but we're gonna get ready for a little eye look here and I feel like I could pull some decent eyeshadow options from various brands. Um, I know in the Emily Awards we talked about Wet n Wild and how good those five and ten color palettes are. I know I've referenced Hard Candy a decent amount. And there are some brands where yeah they've got a smallish palette but maybe it definitely exceeds the ten dollar mark. And so I wanted to put back into your awareness, uh, Believe Beauty from Dollar General. And they're really great six pan palettes. So good. Their powder texture is their strength. So if you find these, if you find a blush, a highlighter, a bronzer, you're getting great pigmentation. This is a brand that's exclusive to Dollar General and it's just really, really good. And so I pulled out their Nearly Nude um, six pan palette, their most basic palette. Yesterday, I guess I was having a little rediscovered moment. I used the one called Sultry Sunset. It's much warmer. Really pretty look. I think I thought this was uh, some kind of limited time thing when I got it, but yet I continue to see it in Dollar General, so maybe it's not. So maybe you already have one of these sitting around, you just haven't used it in a while. Um, this is a great little basic, this one called Nearly Nude. So the shimmers are very smooth. The mattes in here are this dark brown and the cream. So some Sometimes when I use this, I actually start out with a shimmer in my crease just because they're a little less intense depth-wise compared to that darker brown. So I'm going to go to the shade right above the dark brown, um, kind of like a shimmery medium brown, let's say, and I'm going to use my crease brush and I'm just going to go back and forth with that. And even if you don't have this exact little palette, use what you got. You know, same concepts can apply. Take something that seems kind of in the middle, not too light, not too dark and start swiping back and forth 
in the crease. You can see this is shearing out to give us kind of a cool bit of color. And I'm not just thinking about, oh, get it right in that crease, but I'm thinking about going above, as you can see, and getting lift, okay? So a little bit of product on the brush. It's high quality stuff, y'all. Just swiping back and forth and that shimmer finish, I say this a lot, but when you start doing a buff with a shimmer finish, a lot of times the finish becomes kind of irrelevant. It gets so sheared out, you're just seeing the basic color here. It's not an issue. And then we might warm things up a little bit with this shade right here. I call that like a rich rose gold. Get a little on your brush. The formula on these shimmers reminds me so much of what's in those Maybelline, well, I don't think they make them anymore, but the little Maybelline eye quads, they looked like little rectangles and they were almost shaped like little arrows. You know what I mean? Those little quads, they had a really nice smooth shimmery finish in there. So I've been able to warm up the edge of my look ever so slightly just by taking some of that shade that appears somewhat uh, you know, borderline fiery orangey, but it's it's not out of hand. You just take it up. Grab a bare brush, work around just the edge. That's the only place you really need to blend at this point. And then let's take that nice, rich, it's like a rich, warm brown. A little bit of red in it, I can tell. And we can begin patting that on our lid. Look at that, we're just doing a patting motion. No need to swipe, just pat it, press it in. Flip that brush around, get it wedged right into the crease. We'll take care of the finer blending in a second, but oh, it's working so good. Um, what else is probably under 10 as far as drugstore eyeshadow goes? I feel like some of the probably older style CoverGirl things are gonna come in at under 10. Hard Candy, Elf with their quad size stuff. Even Hard Candy, some of the larger stuff is, will be under 10. Okay, so applying and kind of lifting and then I just go back to that same crease brush and help that merge in with everything that was applied to the crease. It just richens up the look a bit. Okay. Oh, haven't had a visit from you in a while. How you doing? Good. Good. Sleeping well? Mm-hmm. Good. Well, see you later. <laughs> then I'm thinking of doing something where we go just a little bit brighter. So maybe we pull in one of these darker shades in here, but don't go like all the way dark. So I'm going to go back to that shade we originally put in the crease, but pick it up with my flat brush, and we're just going to pat it right here. It's a little different look than I usually try for with this palette. But see what we're doing? We're not only dark out here, we're dark out here. And then we're kind of leaving a moment of lightness on the center of the lid. We'll get to you. Look at that. Really looking good. What do you do with that little tiny bit of crease you have there? I say really try to touch the tip of your brush to it and try to go ease slightly above it if you can. And then you can take your crease brush, I'm talking the fluffy one, and just use that to soften out even more. Then we take something that has a bit more reflectivity like this. This absolutely does not require a finger application. I just did it for some reason. When I get to this sort of step, I like the control of placing it right where I want it in the center of my lid. And now we've got that little reflective, pretty catching the light thing going on right there. Love. And what you could do is either go in with your same flat brush or an even smaller one. I'm pulling in something a little smaller just so I can like blend. I got a little bit of that shade on and just like soften either side of the lightest color and just make it blend. Oh gosh, I remembered as I looked in my bag, I have such a good nude lip combo coming. Amazing nude lip combo. I may have buried the lead there. I should have talked about that at the start of the video. I'm going to leave the lids linerless, but I am going to do a little smudging on the lower lash line. This is my cold brew stick from Hard Candy. If you need some good shadow sticks, definitely check out this range. They don't move, okay? Put them on and they set. They will not smudge. And this shade is so perfect with that Believe Beauty six pack. Look at this. Soft definition, but you can't really put your finger on it. Doesn't look like a harsh line of liner. 
Oh, she's pretty. And if you wanted to, you could use a little bit of that, like out on the lower lash line, let's say, if you wish, or upper lash line, I mean. But it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because it's kind of just meshing in with the tone of what is on that outer corner. And I will also say another option for you if you want to make this look even more lifted at the outer edges, a little more dramatic. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you. You don't have to do any of this. <laughs> oh, every other step is required, my friends. <sighs> okay, go into the dark shade with a smaller brush. This is my Profusion Small Pointed Brush. As always, I list and link every tool every product I'm using down below. But you can put that out here in your outer edge and I just kind of gently swirl it up in the general direction of the outer tip of your brow and you can get a little more darkness, a little more lift. Very excited because I have some new devotional journaling types of things that I'm getting into for the start of the year. Just started them yesterday on the first. I've been very heavily into that since 2020, I guess. I was always kind of a person who liked to read a devotional, and I've, I've had them on hand and stuff, but 2020 was the year I really got into, like, I'm doing this daily, and I can see my prayer journals, like, one after the next after the next filled up with consistent years' worth of content, and I can't help but think sometimes, like, after I'm long gone, my kids or somebody's gonna <laughs> discover this stuff and read all my things that were going on in my head. I know I've covered some of that kind of stuff in my, like, morning routine videos, but if you would like an update just talking about some of the stuff I'm using, like, I have my whole new desk calendar, and none of this stuff is, is pricey, really, but when you make that part of your daily routine, that time for you, that time to just like be still. I consider it a time to kind of take in God's guidance and direction and taking the time to do that every single day. I feel like it makes such a difference in the trajectory of your day and the attitude of your day. Not that you can't develop some real sour attitudes when things happen and you got three kids and stuff happens. Like we talk about the need to turn over a new leaf. That can be your first thing in the morning. You're sitting there, you're setting your intention for the day, but if you need to turn over another leaf at about two in the afternoon, you do that. Sometimes it's just about being able to recognize I need to turn over a new leaf. I I need to change my mindset. Anyways, the eye is done. We're gonna do mascara now. So I'm gonna grab my eyelash curler from Shiseido, which is definitely not drugstore price, but definitely an investment worth making, especially if you've got troublesome little straight lashes like mine. And then it's gonna be a two-step lash process today, my friends. This lash primer is under 10, and I've been using it with everything, and some things it's really worked well with. Um, I really like it with the new Lavender Tube Surreal Lash, but I've talked about that quite a bit. So I'm going to pull in a different one that worked pretty well for me yesterday. It's the Lash Sensational Luscious. And I would call this kind of a moldable mascara, okay? Even when it technically dries down, it still feels like you can sort of put your fingers on it and affect the curl even more. But this Essence Lash Booster, Volume Booster, man, like... It wants to lay it down thick. So just one little coat of that, all right? Just make all your lashes go white. This is an upper lash look. Typically I pull in Cali Ray come hell or high water for the lower lashes, but I'm not gonna do that today. This is a strict under $10 video. If you're over $10, you are not welcome here today. Oh man, I had a good fragrance sample that came in some Sephora stuff that I got for Christmas. Okay, I turned around the long way around, but it's Vanilla Woods. The Seven Virtues is the brand. Smells awesome. If you like a good vanilla scent, it's like rich vanilla. So we're just getting in there. We're trying to look up and see the base of the lash. Sometimes I forget to do that. Makes a big difference. The mirror under the nose so you can look up and you can see where the lashes are hooking into your skin. <laughs> then you can really cover the whole entire surface area, okay? So we got white lashes there. Take a moment, make sure that gets dry before we go in with the black top coat. And talking mascara, there are a lot that are over 10, even at Walmart. Walmart is the place to look for the lowest price on these like mainstream brands. And there are so many new-ish ones that are just hovering either just cents below $10 or many of them over 10. Prices are really going up there. I, as a high school kid, I wouldn't have looked twice at the things that were over 10. I think I barely ever got things that were over five, you know? <laughs> All right, that primer feels pretty dry, so we're gonna go in with the Lash Sensational Luscious. It's a little cone-shaped brush that looks like it comes out with a decent amount of product, 
And again, when it gets dry, it just feels more pliable might be the right word. Like if you wanted to reinforce your curl, it would really respond to that. But look what it's doing right now. It's looking kind of instantly big on top of this primer. Oh, so we had a couple days last week. I know I was talking about snow in some videos and snow in the forecast. We had a couple days where we had some real pretty, like feeling like we were sitting in a snow globe vibes. Look out the window and it was just flying on by. Nothing was really sticking to the ground because it just wasn't cold enough here for anything to accumulate. But gosh, was it exciting to be like, it's snowing. Everybody runs to the window. I really love living in Southern Illinois. I, I like it here a lot. You know, we've been here since 2006 and it's great. But the one thing that makes me feel like maybe I'm in the wrong place is that we just don't get enough snow for my liking here. And I never expected to, there to be such a drastic difference climate wise, I guess, between here and West Central Illinois where I'm from. I'm not even all the way up there in Chicago. I'm originally from like just halfway up the state, you know, over by the Mississippi River, over by where Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri all come together. The tri-state area, as the news would say. That's where I'm from. Every winter there would be so many snow events and a lot of snow. And then you come down here and I'm essentially like in the mid-south now down here in Southern Illinois. I'm even with, if not further south than much of the state of Kentucky, you know? If you just look east to west. And yeah, we just don't get that much. There are parts of Kentucky that talk about getting more snow than we ever see. So Southern Illinois, different place. Love it, just want more snow. Has that ever been your one complaint about the place you lived? So maybe this eye, I'll be able to exhibit that. I can feel, okay, nothing's transferring off onto my finger. But that mascara has kind of a, still a feeling of like it can be moved, it can be worked with, it can be kind of pressed up into even more of a curl. So that's kind of neat. Now let's move on to that wonderful nude lip combo. I feel like, have, have I talked my head off in this video? Editing me is not going to love this later. Um, I'm going to use my L'Oreal Color Riche liner. Okay, this is an under 10 and the shade is called Au Natural. It's a retractable lip liner and very just everyday friendly. So we're going to fill in with that the entire lips. This nude lip combo is perfection, by the way. I can't say enough. So this is a really smooth lip liner. I feel like it doesn't quite adhere to the lips as well as Revlon, but it's okay. It's about the look here. It's about the color. And this is going to give us a good little bit of definition. I should probably compare this shade straight up against Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury because I feel like they would have to be really close, actually. That soft kind of dusty pink. She's all filled in. And then um, you're gonna take Bare Affair from Revlon Super Lustrous. These have been Emily Award winners before. They didn't win out in that category this year, but I still, I love the Super Lustrous lipsticks. I recently did a try on of a dozen brand new Super Lustrous lipsticks, but Bare Affair, this has been part of the line for a while. It is a beautiful cream nude lipstick. I think I made a big thing about this in a TikTok video sometime last year. So we're just gonna smooth this across, okay? And we're gonna get this nice creamy nude color. It almost takes that pink that was just put on there, makes it a little more nude, a little less pink. Okay, let me swatch this on my hand so you actually see what the true shade of it is. See that? Ultra wearable. And then the gloss we're gonna use on top, and this is kind of a newer release gloss from the L'Oreal, I can't remember what the range is called because L'Oreal just keeps that a secret on the tube, but the shade is 40 Blissful Blush. That's the glosses that look like this. Got the little rose gold tube or top and the eight shaped doe foot applicator or infinity doe foot, you know? And you're just going to pop this on top and you're going to get this smooth looking, shiny, perfect, I think, perfect tone nude lip. Not too brown, not too pink, not too light, not too dark. Straight out to the edges with that though. Mmm, it's a two thumbs up nude. I really don't like every nude that I try and I experiment a lot, but that, I gotta say that, that slays. Still, after all this time raving about the nude lip, you can go back to that mascara and you can tip your lashes up with your fingers. And doing this step with certain mascaras, this being one, this can affect it for the entire day. Like this can keep these upturned for the whole day. 
Look how good they're looking. Okay, so this is the look, my friends. I think I'm gonna leave the headband on. <laughs> not for going places, but just for <laughs> video's sake. The hair's not doing anything. But I am super duper happy with this full face of products from the drugstore, nothing over $10, many of these things well under $10. Um, let me know if any of these have been your must-have products, like are you a dewy and smooth girl day in, day out? Have you never lost sight of Instant Age Rewind from Maybelline? Have you actually tried this new lip combo and do you love it? Chat with me in the comments section. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I greatly appreciate it and let me know your requests. As always, I'm gonna be revamping my request list for 2024, so I really really want to know what you want to see. This video was a request and I had the best time uh, just formulating what I was going to do here and shooting the video for you guys. You come up with the best ideas. So thank you in advance for that. And I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.